Recently, I made a video about higher order multiples and you all loved it. But in that video, they said this about the Derricos. This family has twins followed by two sets of triplets and a set of quints. They had 15 biological children resulting from six pregnancies. I don't know if it's a record, but it sounds like it should be. Well, it turns out the Derricos do not actually have the record for the most multiples not even close at all. Today we're going through several families who have multiple sets of multiples, which honestly sounds like my personal and professional nightmare. Let's see what we can find. First, we're gonna get this claim out of the way because if I don't address this straight away, there will be comments everywhere like there were when I missed the Dion set of multiples in one of the videos about not talking about this person. So Valentina Vasiliev, who I am positive you have all seen at some point on some social media website, has long been claimed to be the person who had the most pregnancies and birthed the most children ever. This lore says that Valentina Vasiliev, between 1725 and 1765, birthed 69 children from 27 pregnancies, okay? Now, I'm gonna go through this just like I will the rest of them. This one's gonna have a different outcome, okay? So parents are Valentina and Fyodor Vasilev, and they did not have any fertility treatments because it was the 1700s and that wasn't around. Who knows about a family history of multiples because, you know, uh, record keeping on your family tree for Russian peasants was just not a real popular thing to do in 1750. The claim here is that they had 16 pairs of twins, that's 32 kids. They had seven sets of triplets, that's 21 kids. And they had four sets of quadruplets, that is 16 kids. There's so many problems with this because one, let's pretend this is true, okay? So if we do the math, 1725 to 1765, that's 40 years. And the idea of a person having their pregnancies over this time span end up with 69 children is just, even if you had your first pregnancy at 12 and then was pregnant every possible time frame from then, that would mean that 52 would be the last pregnancy. And that would be remarkable now with fertility treatment, but you were lucky to live to 50 in the 1700s, much less still be reproducing. This is insane. Problem number two, having that many sets of multiples. I mean, the odds of this have to be exorbitantly high. I mean, so high that, can you see up there where I'm pointing how highly unlikely this is? No, you can't see it because there's no way this is real, okay? Problem number three, surviving that many births in the 1700s in Russia or anywhere, please, please, you're lucky to survive one or two births in the 1700s, all right? Another point that I wanna bring up is if you had quadruplets that survived, multiple sets of quadruplets that survived, like this is just, even triplets, even twins, I just, I'm not buying it. Your risk of hemorrhage, the baby's dying because they were preterm. This is bananas. It's bananas. That's all I have to say, all right? But an interesting point, the BBC did an article in 2015 about this and they did some rough calculations on how many times this person would be pregnant and then how long that would be in years. So if you added it up, 16 twins, assuming they made it to 37 weeks, seven triplets, assuming they made it to 32 weeks, and four quadruplets, assuming they made it to 30 weeks, that means that this person was pregnant for 18 years. 18 years of their life. It's impressive. And to have that many pregnancies and no singletons, please. Hyperovulation is a genetic trait that some people have, and that is probably how we end up with these people who have multiple sets of multiples spontaneously, but not that many. And not that many with zero singletons. Like at some point, you would have a set of twins and one of them didn't make it past first trimester or you just got pregnant with one that time. It's just, this is silly. This is the most realistic part of this story is that if you had 69 children, you would look like that because I basically look like that now and I only have four. Unsurprisingly, perhaps, 
Valentina and Theodore apparently ended up divorcing at some point. He apparently got another wife who only ended up having 18 children. So poor second wife who just couldn't live up to the standards of wife number one, but all in all, a little skeptical on this one. The rest of them are verifiably real. So this is Karen and Colin Roger of Glasgow, Scotland. They met in 1993 and she was a dancer. He was managing a band, adorable. They have a family history of multiples, but not significantly. Karen's maternal great-grandmother had twins, but otherwise they don't have any multiples in the family that they know of. Multiples run in the family as a trait that is expressed in people who have ovaries and it's just hyper ovulation. So instead of ovulating once, you just have a tendency to ovulate more than once with each cycle. Although it is obviously only able to be seen in people who ovulate, it can be passed down even in men. So like if I had the trait, it's still carried through my sons. So then if they eventually had a daughter, then that person could have it. Does that make sense? So when I was growing up, I thought, even like in med school, I thought it was only passed from female DNA, but that's not actually the case. And that's why a lot of times you will hear people say it skips a generation because it came from like their grandpa or something like that. So that's where that misnomer came from. It doesn't actually skip a generation. It's just, you only see it if the person who ovulates is the one that's carrying it. Otherwise it just continues to be possibly passed down. Anyway, they had no fertility treatment. And in 1999, they had their first pregnancy and birth, which was a set of fraternal boys named Lewis and Kyle. They were born by C-section. That pregnancy for Karen was affected by hyperemesis gravidarum. Hyperemesis gravidarum is a form of really severe nausea and vomiting associated with pregnancy. This is way more than your normal like morning sickness that people will get. This is significant nausea, vomiting, and generally feeling horrible that can get to the point of significant weight loss and in some people even organ failure or needing to be hospitalized for prolonged periods of time to get IV nutrition or to have tubes placed and things like that. Despite that, they decided to get pregnant again. And in 2001, they got pregnant again with another set of fraternal twin boys. These boys were also born by C-section and their names are Finn and Jude. And 2013, so when the youngest twins were 12, they got pregnant again and this time had a set of fraternal twin girls who were also born by C-section. During the third pregnancy, she found out she was having twins when she went in to have some antepartum bleeding or bleeding during pregnancy checked out and was told it's twins. She was 41 at the time of this pregnancy and they were born by C-section. There's a quote from an article on this family in The Guardian and it says, the obstetrician lifted Rowan out and held her up for us to see. And I said, there's some bits missing. And she said, no, it's a girl. <laughs> I was absolutely stunned. Then two minutes later, they held up Isla and I could see straight away another girl. Karen and I were in shock for at least 15 minutes. It's a lot to take in after four boys. So that is how they ended up with six children out of three pregnancies and all of them were twins. Boys, fraternal boys, fraternal boys, fraternal girls. I have a whole video on twins if you want to know more about what I was talking about earlier with the genetics and what is fraternal versus uh, identical, monozygotic, dizygotic, the different types of twins, all of that. Moving on, we have Lorraine and Kevin Horan of Inniscorthy, Ireland. I probably butchered that. I apologize. This is the Horan family in 1999. They got pregnant for the first time, and that was Alex, a singleton. October 31st, 2001, set of twins was born Jade and Kian, and then about 10 months later, in early September 2002, they had their second set of twins, Sam and Abby. They had another singleton in 2007, and that is Max, and then another set of twins in 2009, Jasmine and Callan. The Irish twins designation technically is supposed to be two babies born in the same calendar year. Uh, so they don't technically fall into that categorization, but having two sets of twins 10 months apart is a unique kind of predicament. The next family we're talking about is Channing Grisman and 
Robbie Scheiman Grusman from California. They also had no fertility treatment and don't report any multiples in her family. The father has uh, twin siblings that are younger than him, but genetically from a medical standpoint, that should not be related. It could be related, like we were talking about earlier, if one of their girls ends up having twins, maybe, but not for him. So their first set of twins was born in 2012. That's the same year my twins were born. That is Mushka and Ita. In 2017, they had another set of girls, Rochelle and Leah. In 2020, they had boy-girl twins, Mendel and Esther. And in 2023, girl twins, Miriam and Yoshebed. And this is a quote from the mother. I didn't tell my kids that they were twins, but my kids are like, that's a given in the family. It's just a given. I think she's talking about like the last set of twins that they had. She didn't tell the kids that it was going to be twins. They just assumed because everybody else is, which is just so wild. Next family is Ashton Raleigh. Ashton and Eric Raleigh are from Virginia and they had experienced unexplained fertility for four years and they started IVF in 2016. And they transferred two embryos during IVF and ended up getting pregnant with twin girls that they named Amelia and Eloise. But in 2019, they decided that they would have one more baby and they transferred one embryo. At that point, it split into twin boys. Owen and Wyatt. So these would be monozygotic twins. One embryo transferred, it split two babies. So these are identical twins. Their first set is fraternal because it was two separate embryos. So monozygotic is one zygote that splits into two and dizygotic is starting with two embryos, ending up with two babies. In 2022, without the help of IVF, they had a surprise pregnancy and ended up pregnant with twin girls, Rose and Violet again which is crazy. I just, I'm not sure how I would feel. I'm sure thrilled. I'm sure they were thrilled after they got used to the idea, maybe. Monique Duvall and Lamar Duvall from Virginia, they have no fertility treatment in their story. And the father's father is a twin, but there's no family history on the mom's side. And that wouldn't be related to this. So this is a spontaneous twin pregnancy that we're going to talk about in a minute. So in 2014, they got pregnant for the first time and their son, a singleton Messiah, was born. And in 2017, they ended up having twin boys, Nasser and Sincere. And then in 2023, they had fraternal triplets, two girls and a boy. And they were delivered at 33 weeks by C-section, which is really great for triplets to make it to 33 weeks is awesome. They were interviewed on Good Morning America and this Duvall said, I was like, it's easy, referring to raising twins. So I guess maybe God said, you kept saying it was easy, so I have something else for you. Look, you can have three. <laughs> the next one is one that probably now, if we've made it this far in the video on YouTube, I have a thousand comments of people saying, hello, why are you not talking about Mama Uganda? And here we go. All right, we'll talk about Mama Uganda. Mariam Nabatenzi, who is known as Mama Uganda, had a very interesting obstetric history. A lot of what is written about her really differs from a standpoint of like what her actual pregnancies were, how many sets of each one that we're going to talk about. The general consensus is that she had 44 children and 38 are still alive. But again, it varies by what source you look at. The most reputable news source that we could find was from routers and it had written about her, how many she delivered and 38 which are living. Miriam was sold into marriage by her father when she was 12 and her husband was, I think, around 40 at that time. I, his name is not in any of the publications. And so she gave birth for the first time at age 13. So this story is not as happy-go-lucky as the rest of them because it involves some things that are you know, a little bit more difficult to talk about and to think about happening. The Monitor website says that there was a family history of multiples, but we don't have a lot of information on their background and there was obviously no uh, fertility treatment involved. The pregnancies and births, as best I can tell, is that she had six sets of twins, so 12 babies from twins, four sets of triplets, 12 babies from triplets and five sets of quadruplets, 20 children 
as quads. And according to a documentary that I'll show you a clip of in just a second, she went to get help because she wanted to stop conceiving after birthing 18 children. And that was when she turned 18. She says that they told her that she had too many eggs and that she needed to reduce the number by continually having more. So they basically said like, sorry, nothing we can do. You just have to keep having babies because you have too many eggs. She had an IUD at one point and apparently it made her really sick, like apparently in the hospital in a coma for a month and she couldn't continue to use that. And according to the monitor, she was able to get a tubal ligation in 2019. She tries to name all of her kids in this documentary and I'll show you the clip in just a second and it's, it's really entertaining. Um, Karen put a note here that says, my parents had four kids and often got our names wrong when trying to summon one of us and relatable. I frequently am calling my children each other's names, the cat's name, what, you know, whatever I'm looking at on the wall. It, your brain just can't function that fast all the time. Atimu, Josefu, Chiara, Pensozozuku, Chuomamagai, Chamira Muto, Nao Chamira Muto, Nao Dija, Nao Viola. You know, it's okay. You know, Trevor. You know, Carl. You know, Emran. You know, Bandi Kakamba. But never an enga. Ngo muzadi. But nasi na gwesemani. All right. I hope that you learned something and enjoyed learning about these incredible multiple multiples families. I'll see you next Monday.